coming up tonight on YCN News. New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan is postponing Wednesday's State of the State address due to safety concerns. A Laconia, New Hampshire businessman must pay $85,000 in state fines for falsely advertising the quality of modular homes it offered customers. And a trimmed down school budget will face Cornish voters this March. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Tuesday edition of YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Citing safety concerns, New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan is postponing Wednesday's State of the State Address. Lawmakers were to gather from around the state in Concord to hear Hassan give this annual speech. Now, the governor will speak at 2 p.m. Thursday from the State House. Snow is predicted to begin falling around midnight Tuesday through Wednesday afternoon. Any other legislative meetings scheduled for Thursday morning will take place, state leaders announced today. House of Representative committee meetings scheduled for afternoon or later in the day Thursday will be held at a later date. A Laconia, New Hampshire businessman must pay $85,000 in state fines for falsely advertising the quality of modular homes it offered customers, part of a settlement reached with the state attorney general's office. Brady Sullivan of Pogus Woods, LLC, reached a settlement with the state's Consumer Protection and Antitrust Bureau, Attorney General Joseph Foster announced today. Sullivan was sued by Foster's office for allegedly incorrectly describing in promotion materials details of the modular homes. The prefab homes were part of the villas at Pogus Woods subdivision on White Oaks Road in Laconia. These homes were described as being compliant with all of state building codes when this was not true, Foster said in a statement. Defects found by inspectors included homes not properly attached to their foundations, inadequate insulation, and faulty electrical and heating means. A home is the most significant purchase many of us will make in our lifetimes, Foster wrote. An independent engineer was hired by the state to inspect every home in the subdivision. All of the defects found were repaired at Sullivan's expense. The case was settled in Belknap County Superior Court. Under the settlement terms, if requested by the homeowner, Sullivan must buy back the homes at the purchase price. After the break, we'll learn about a crash this morning that left a 23-year-old woman's car totaled and why Cornish voters will be faced with a trimmed down school budget in March. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. I'm Rose Spillman. Vermont State Police say neither drugs nor alcohol are a factor in a crash this morning that left a 23-year-old woman uninjured, yet her car totaled. Driver Natasha Logson was headed south on I-91 near Exit 4 around 6.45 a.m. when she lost control of the green GMC Envoy she was driving. Exit 4 is near Dummerston and Putney, Vermont. Logson's car crossed both lanes of traffic and collided into a guardrail. The road was dry and the weather clear, police report. She was able to stop the car when it slowed down near the breakdown lane, say police. Logson was wearing a seatbelt. The car was removed from the scene by Rod's towing. No charges have been filed. A trimmed down school budget will face Cornish voters this March. That's because after much discussion between residents and school board members to keep tax rates lower, several employees had their work hours reduced. This includes Cornish Elementary School principal Sylvia Sivret's summer hours and the library media specialist as well. A petition on this year's Cornish School District warning asks for voters to consider changing how it adopts its education budget. Rather than have a separate school budget meeting and vote in March, as is now done, voters would mark ballots during annual town meeting day. That would be the second Tuesday of March. The proposed 2014-15 to 15 school budget is about $3.5 million. If passed, 
it would add an increase of $0.25 cents per thousand dollar valuation to the school portion of the tax rate. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Rose Spillman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next five days and he'll take a look at some local high school sports. Thanks Rose. Tomorrow be careful when driving as we're expecting five to eight inches of snow. Highs will be in the upper 20s with a low of 10 degrees. Thursday will have a high of 26 and lows down to 4 degrees, so you might want to bring out your big coat for when the sun goes down. Saturday will have highs in the upper 20s with lows of 5 and 6 degrees. Sunday, we're expecting more snow, so get out and enjoy the slopes or make a snowman with your friends. We'll have a high of 26 degrees and lows in the teens. If you're in the Newport area this week, be sure to check out their winter carnival events every day through Sunday. Friday, there will be ice skating games at 3 p.m. on the Newport Common, as well as the Queen's Pageant at the Opera House at 7 p.m. And now let's look at the mountain snow conditions brought to you by Ski New Hampshire. It's Monday, February 3rd, and we're at Mount Sunapee, offering big mountain skiing and snowboarding just 90 minutes from Boston. We're out today enjoying great snow and comfortable midwinter temperatures, and looking forward to some big snow midweek. February vacation weeks are right around the corner, and Ski New Hampshire resorts offer lots of fun ways to make the most of your family time. Take a look at Mount Sunapee's Amp Energy Acrobag. The airbag came about because with the change in freestyle skiing and snowboarding, uh, it's a pretty useful tool for kids to develop new tricks or even get used to, to using the park features. They get to get comfortable with the speed of coming into jumps and takeoffs, air awareness, things like that. And obviously they can learn new tricks with minimal danger involved. Given our area here, we don't have a lot of terrain that we can give up for the space for tubing. So we got to brainstorming a little bit and experimented with uh, sending the tubes down a track and then off a jump. Well, we decided to have a little fun with it, and uh, so this is tubing centipede style, and we go down the track here and launch into the airbag. For more ideas on vacation fun, check out the February Vacation Guide on SkiNH.com. We've got all kinds of activities at ski areas, lift ticket deals, events, details on kids' programs, ski and stay packages, snow conditions, and more. The rest of this week into the weekend features seasonable temperatures and more than a few chances of fresh snow. Skiing is hitting its midwinter prime, and you owe it to yourself to get out on the slope soon. Put down that shovel and come have some fun. 33 Ski Resorts, one stop. SkiNH.com. And now, let's look at some basketball results from last night's high school games. The Newport Tigers boys team triumphed over Hinsdale 87-33. Newport now has a record of 11 wins and 1 loss. Their winning streak was spoiled by Sunapee last week. You can catch this game tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. on Comcast channels 20 and 7.12. Newport will commence their season with a game against Stevens on Thursday. Also in boys basketball, the Hanover Marauders got the better of Conval 74-51. There were two games yesterday involving Fall Mountain and Stevens. The Fall Mountain boys team won 67-59. The Fall Mountain girls team also defeated Stevens with 54 points to 37 points. Thank you for joining us for this Tuesday edition of YCN News. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can watch our programs anytime online at www.ycnnow.com. Be sure to tune in tomorrow to hear from Don West of the Make a Difference program for middle school students. I'm Rose Spillman for YCN, your local view. Good night.